Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are as pumped as we are about all that we announced this week. If there is one topic almost everyone cares about, especially during these macroeconomic conditions, is cost and how to manage those well. Well, a great management thinker, Peter Drucker, once said, you can only effectively manage things that you can measure. After working with several large, successful customers running cost efficiently on AWS, we've learned a corollary to that, which is you can only effectively drive change in a large organization if you're able to contextualize what you're measuring and then share those insights with individuals and teams who are inspired to take action. In today's session, we'll discuss how you can scale and create financial awareness within your organization, how you can drive cost efficiencies with your engineering teams by analyzing your cost and usage data with Amazon QuickSight. I'm Rohit Pujari from the QuickSight leadership team. Joining me, I have. Hi, I'm Aaron Edel. I run the Cloud Intelligence Dashboards team and uh, general go-to-market around FinOps at AWS. Really excited to be here with you guys. All right. For those who are getting started, Amazon QuickSight is a hyperscale business intelligence service that you can use to build data-rich experiences for your organization. We launched Amazon QuickSight in 2016 to support some of the most sophisticated and demanding sets of customers, such as Dolby, Siemens, NFL, just to name a few. And we built it the Amazon way, which means you can get started quickly and deliver insights within your organization and also to your end customers without needing to manage servers or infrastructure. It delivers consistent performance at all scale. For example, fulfillment by Amazon, which is an Amazon.com service that our third-party marketplace sellers use to outsource their shipping to Amazon.com. Hundreds of thousands of those users use embedded QuickSight dashboards to understand their sales performance and make inventory decisions. And last but not the least, Amazon QuickSight comes with consumption-based paper session pricing, which means, and which our customers tell us, it's orders of magnitude cheaper and cost-effective than traditional BI solutions. So now you have some understanding of what QuickSight is. To kick things off, We'll first describe the value of cloud financial management and why it exists. And then while doing so, we'll run through a scenario that we've seen commonly play out in many organizations we've dealt with. And while doing so, we'll introduce a few personas. We'll talk about their needs, their desires, and their wants. And then we'll introduce and explore cloud intelligence dashboards and describe how they how they help those use cases. And we also have a demo lined up for you today where we will showcase key FinOps use cases that these dashboards enable. So you can take a mental leap and imagine what these dashboards can do for your organization. And then we'll touch upon how you can help create financial awareness using capabilities of cloud intelligence dashboards and QuickSight. And finally, we'll bring in our star of the show, Mike Graff from Dolby, to finish off strong by telling their story with cloud intelligence dashboards. All right, let's get started. Gartner estimates that global cloud spend is on track to hit $495 billion by end of 2022. Although that's such a massive figure, it doesn't surprise us one bit, given how strong of an enabler cloud has been for customers of all stripes, from startups to enterprises to small and medium businesses. But what does give us a pause, though, and makes us think we could do better is the Flexera study that states enterprises waste around 32% of their cloud spend. Well, it's important to note that spending can be good if it's helping you drive proportionate business outcomes if it's helping you acquire new customers, if it's helping you grow revenue, 
if it's helping you stand apart from your competition. These are examples of good spend. So not all spend is necessarily bad, but wasting most certainly is. You want to avoid paying for resources that are sitting idle. You want to avoid paying for underutilized capacity. You want to spot architectural inefficiencies in your applications the moment they creep in. But then how do you go about differentiating between a good spend and a wasteful spend? And more importantly, how do you then make decisions about where to invest and where to pare back? Well, a chief enemy of good decision is lack of sufficient perspectives. And cloud financial management, if done right, is an antidote to that. Cloud financial management is about bringing teams together from finance, procurement, engineering, operations, together to enable principled, data-driven decision-making. It's also about making decisions that allow us to move faster while being able to, while being financially responsible for our organization. And it's about seeing your cloud spend in terms of the business value it delivers to you and the customers you support. So the same study, Flexera, found that companies who have earnestly practiced cloud financial management are meaningfully benefiting from that. 67% of the enterprises say that CFM has helped them grow their revenue. So how do most customers get started? Meet Amy. Amy is the FinOps practitioner. She's brimming with confidence. She's just joined the company. And prior to joining, she was an IT program manager. She had delivered a few migration projects. So she's aware of AWS. But FinOps is a new area for her. It's a new functional arena. And her company had recently migrated to AWS. Her company chose to do a lift and shift migration, as that was the fastest path out of the data center. So the now teams are comfortable with the cloud operating model, and they are ready to take on refactoring projects. And Amy is now at the helm to come up with a cost optimization strategy. So Amy goes by what she knows. She talks to some of her colleagues, and she learns that she can go to Cost Explorer and see her spend. So she does that. She logs into her payers account. She can see her spend over time. She can see which services are contributing to that spend. She can summarize the spend by services, by accounts, by regions, by instance types. She feels good about that. So as she is getting ready to provide spend update to her CFO, she's still wondering at the back of her head, how do I get the next level of detail? Like, how do I make this information actionable to my engineering teams? So let's see how that conversation unfolds. So this is what happens. Our CFO says, yeah, that's good. That's great. I'm really glad you're able to tell us about some you know, high-level spend and some cost information about our AWS accounts. But I need more than reporting. I need a strategy. We need to lower our costs. We need to get on top of cloud financial management so that we can make sure that our unit costs and our margin are in line with what we expect it to be as, our, as an organization. So as a CFO, I'm asking Amy, what will, what will our costs be next month, right? What are we projecting it to be into the future? Um, we, need a, we have a new product coming out. We need to set pricing for that product. How do we do that? How do we make that decision? Everyone in my organization, including my engineers and all of the people who work with me and report to me, need access to this data. They also need to be able to be a part of the decision making that happens here at our organization. So if I have my bosses who are in the C-suite and I have engineers who have questions as well about what kind of product decisions should they make, how can I address this for everyone and scale it out to everyone within the organization and give them access in ways that make sense for their roles and make sense for the contributions that they can make. All right. So now Amy is trying to parse the request from Martha. She knows that 
Martha is looking for her to come up with cost optimization strategy. She is looking to price products. She wants to scale the financial awareness. So Amy does some research. And she learns there are a multitude of ways to save on AWS. You can use reserved instances, savings plans, easy to spot instances. There are different types and kinds of storage tiers you could use to improve and get, her, get, get a better price for your storage. She also finds that there are potentially opportunities left to right size, because if you know, Amy's organization had chosen to lift and shift most of her workloads. So she has all these great ideas, but she's still unclear as to where should she start. And rightfully so, because there are so many tools, right? There's so many places for her to go and get this information. And she uh, learned about Trusted Advisor, for example. Right? She can use that to get some really good right-sizing information. Uh, oh, and there's, all, there's still Cost Explorer. We don't want to forget that. Um, that's a really good place to go in, and, and you can build reports, and you can uh, custom what you're, uh, customize the filters and the groupings and these kinds of things. Um, oh, but then there's also AWS Budgets. So AWS Budgets, awesome tool. I can set budgets. I can have them auto-increase based on percentage of spend. It can even alert me if I'm forecasted to spend uh, more than what my budget is set for. There's also cost anomaly detection. Cost anomaly detection is fantastic because cost anomaly detection is a machine learning model that's trained on AWS cost and billing data. And so that can alert me if I have an anomaly. And that can be really important, especially if you're just looking at monthly data, right? Oh, great, uh, you know, we, we spent $100,000 one day by accident a month ago. Yeah, it's a little late to find that out. So cost anomaly detection really helps Amy figure this out. Um, Reserved instances and savings plans are an awesome tool for FinOps and for cost optimization. They're kind of table stakes at this point. So uh, that information is not necessarily in Cost Explorer. So I need to go somewhere else and, and get this information so that I can generate these reports and see what have we saved, what has our coverage been, what money have we left on the table. All right. So we looked at all these different tools. These tools provide targeted view into the individual pieces of the cost optimization puzzle. But Amy wants to see all those insights in single place. She wants to visualize all of that insight coming from all those services from one single place. And the reason for that is because she wants to be able to set cost optimization KPIs for her application teams. She needs to understand her unit costs so she can measure the impact of the cost optimization efforts. Now, unit cost is a way for companies to see their spend in context of what it means for, for their business. For example, if your spend is going up and if your unit costs are trending down, it's actually a good indication that you are running with cost efficiency in your environment. But let's say if your spend is growing up and your unit costs are growing up, that means you're leaving some cost optimization opportunities on the table. So unit costs also could be elusive because it depends what it means to your organization. So I'd like you to picture a three-layer cake with cherries on top. You can add as many cherries as you want. It's your cake. The bottom layer of the cake constitutes your infrastructure unit costs, where you track and measure your fundamental costs for your applications. For example, cost of storage per gig, cost of compute per hour. The middle layer forms your functional unit costs. They map directly to, the, to your application teams, but their unit, they're expressed in per unit terms. So for example, they could be the cost of processing a transaction. It could be cost of uploading a file. It could be cost of delivering a machine learning prediction. The top tier is your business unit costs. They best illustrate the value of your spend in terms of the value it provides to your business. And just like the top layer of the cake, the top layer of your unit metrics 
is also very unique to the occasion, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. So the top layer of your business unit metrics really depends on the business you are in. So now you could see that Amy wants to be able to first A, derive, and B, share those insights with the stakeholders, many of whom lack access to AWS console. So effectively, if you look at Amy's situation, she's looking for a solution that can give her a really good start right off the bat. The solution can grow with her and evolve with her use cases. And more importantly, she wants a solution that can provide unrestricted distribution capabilities so she can share those insights with the teams and stakeholders. So what can Amy do? This is why we built the cloud intelligence dashboards. So my team uh, set about solving this problem about a year and a half ago, and uh, we discovered that what we can do within AWS is offer a solution that works on AWS native services on top of the underlying data sources that we are talking about and deliver to Amy and, and, and everyone else who's in this position a set of dashboards in their account that uh, was built in fire, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> FinOps is fire. FinOps is fire. <laughs> Uh, when you've been through the pain of, of, of what Amy has gone through, uh, you, you, you do realize that you know, it's important in how you think about this, uh, this data. So when we built the cloud intelligence dashboards, we realized there's actually uh, different personas who need to tackle this. So we have six dashboards. And the six dashboards spread across these personas uh, are our are, are way of giving something to Amy and giving something to the head of engineering and giving something to Amy's boss and giving something to the CEO all at the same time. So um, the executives are going to be really interested in the cloud intelligence dashboard, uh, the cost intelligence dashboard and trends, right? These are high level summaries. Um, all the way back on, onto the right, which is the trusted advisor and compute optimizer dashboards, we talked about that as a source of information. Uh, these, these dashboards are very FinOpsy because they uh, are just about helping you find all of the individual resources that are over-provisioned or under-provisioned and need to be right-sized. And then right in the middle is the KPI dashboard and the Kudos dashboard. The KPI dashboard is 18 cost optimization metrics that we recommend you track. We tell you where you sit with them and give you the goals to track and what we think you would save if you met your goals. And the Kudos dashboard is uh, Everyone loves the Kudos dashboard. The Kudos dashboard is definitely our most in-depth dashboard. It gets very detailed. It allows you to drill down, start wide, drill down, and get into resource-level granular information so that the engineers can take action, the product managers can take action, uh, and, and everyone else can take action. All right. So now you might be wondering how the sausage is made. So CID collects information from all the sources that we looked at. AWS cost and usage report, the most comprehensive source of your billing information. We collect data from AWS organizations, which is the metadata about your accounts, AWS budgets, AWS trusted advisor, as well as compute optimizer, where we gain insights from over or underutilized instances. And then if you look at the bottom, the CID framework, that's the core artery through which all these insights are made available to QuickSight and in turn to cloud intelligence dashboards. In more technical terms, we are giving you a fully automated serverless analytics pipeline that is forming a cost data lake for you to turbocharge your FinOps journey. So now let's take some of these dashboards. Should we show them? Yeah. Who wants to see them? Nobody. Uh, everybody wants to see them. <laughs> there we go. HDMI 1, everybody, just in case you were wondering. OK. So what you're looking at right now is the, is the Compute Optimizer dashboard. So we usually recommend our customers start with this dashboard because um, we can have an argument about this, and we probably should after, after we're done. Uh, about what are the right, what's the right order in, in tackling FinOps with all of the options that you have. But right-sizing 
uh, is a really good thing to do pretty early on in the process. So the Compute Optimizer dashboard is here to help you reach right size. Thank now this you. is all the information from all your payer accounts, all your organizations, all in one place. It doesn't matter what region they're in, it doesn't matter where, what the account is. I've got $520,000 worth of, we could say waste, we could say potential savings. It's a philosophical difference you decide uh, that I need to tackle. I know that um, down here, this month over month graph is actually giving me something very interesting that I don't get anywhere else, which is context. So if I told you that you had $258,000 worth of potential savings, uh, that might sound like a lot. It might sound like not a lot. Without knowing what was it last month, it's hard to tell if you're headed in the right direction. So throughout these dashboards, you're gonna see month over month graphs for that reason, because I can't just give you the state of the state today and the facts today without giving you the context. Now, uh, this is a very high level summary of, of all of the right sizing we need to do. We've got about a quarter of a million dollars worth of right sizing to do with EC2 uh, and, and some right sizing to do with other sources. So I'm just gonna show you the EC2 tab today because we, you know, for time. In the EC2 tab, I have the option of looking at all of this information by business unit, which is something I really like to do. And that's because you might have one account per business unit, some customers do that, but a lot of customers don't. They kind of grew organically on AWS and now they've got 1,000 accounts and you know, 15 business units, right? So the, that grouping can easily be imported into this dashboard, into QuickSight. In fact, it can be imported into all the dashboards you see. And I can sort of get a better picture of how my business units are doing in terms of their uh, opportunity for right sizing and optimization. Now, Again, this month over month graph tells me I am headed in the wrong direction because my right sizing opportunities are increasing, which is not what we want. Um, when I look at this graph here by business unit, I can see that the business unit Huff, Schwartz, and Young, which is made up, uh, needs the most attention, right? We all have limited resources. I've not heard of a customer who's got a thousand FinOps people working for them quite yet, right? I don't think we're there yet, right? These teams are small. And so sometimes we need to prioritize. So this helps us prioritize where we need to take action. Now all these visuals are gonna help us kind of slice and dice the recommendations and understand what's the highest risk, what's the highest amount of potential savings, and then the engineers should have access to this dashboard too because here is literally every single instance where they are and what the right sizing recommendation is. So if I click on this one for example, it's an R54X large, it's over provisioned. Uh, if I were to move it to a T3 large, which is the recommendation I'd save, quite a lot of money, $1,200 to be exact per month. And I can make, uh, a, 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 I can check these statistics here about the percentage of memory and CPU that's being used. In my case, it's under 9% of CPU and under 4% of memory, so I'm barely using this instance. And this is over a period of time to make sure that we're, you know, taking those burst workloads into a consideration as well. So we wanna make sure you have this information, you know, before you actually go and change and right size this instance. So the Compute Optimizer dashboard is great for, for those uh, right sizing recommendations from EC2, Autoscale, Lambda, and EBS. The Trusted Advisor or, uh, dashboard is another really great resource of this, for this kind of information. Now Trusted Advisor has a lot of other non-cost related checks that it does. Again, month over month graphs. Why? Because now I have some context. I can see that my teams are getting closer to green overall so I don't have to yell at anybody. If we go to the cost optimization tab, we're gonna get even more right sizing recommendations. Uh, if I scroll down here, some of the key ones that I'll show you, and, and there is some overlap, by the way, between Trusted Advisor and Compute Optimizer. So uh, this is not a perfect world, and there's always room for improvement. But it's important for me to have all the data first. Now I know what my uh, idle RDS DB instances are, right? So I can see what that is. I can get a list of the actual instances, where they are, what the resource ID is, and how much I could potentially save, right? So now I know what, whose phone number to call and say, excuse me, uh, we're spending a lot of money on these RDS instances, what's going on? There's um, EC2 instances is covered, and then we have some uh, you know, other, other uh, right sizing recommendations that when you explore these dashboards, which uh, you will all be able to do, this link is publicly available, and I'll make sure uh, we share it at the end, so that you can all uh, see what these dashboards look like and interact with it. Uh, now I'm gonna jump to the KPI dashboard, because I think that this is a really good next step for Amy and for, for folks who are in the FinOps uh, role. 
The KPI da dashboard, as I, recommend, as I mentioned earlier, has 18 cost optimization KPIs that we recommend you track. And again, remember, FinOps is fire. We were in the fire. These are the, these are the ones that customers have told us are really important to them. So we didn't just pull these out of thin air. Um, and these are, it, uh, these are the, the way that the, the low-hanging fruit, the way that you can prioritize this work given limited resources. So things like what percentage of your spend is on previous generation instances? What percentage of your spend is on spot, uh, on Graviton, on on-demand? What percentage of your spend is on old snapshots, GP2 instant, uh, volume types, those kinds of things? This is going to give me a really good insight into where I sit. Am I green? What's my organization doing? Look, I've got 1% of my spend on Graviton, 40% of my spend on spot. That's why it's green, because it's good. And I've got 4% spent on previous generation instances. So I'm doing pretty well here, but there's a lot more room for improvement. In fact, I can see what my potential savings would be if I met these goals. Now, the goals are set by us in the dashboard, and they're pretty generic. So for example, we recommend that less than 10% of your spend on EC2 be on previous generation instances. We recommend that uh, less than 30% of your spend be on on-demand. Change these goals, right? These, these are, these, this is meant for you to interact with. This is meant for you to come in and say, OK, well, that's a good starting place. But man, we want to be really aggressive with Graviton, because we just attended an awesome re-event session, and we learned about Graviton 7. And it's going to save us a whole lot of money, right? So this lets me come in here as an organization and decide what these need to be. And you can be at a team level. It can be at an application level. And when I come back, I can see how I track against these goals. And then I can see the potential savings again adjusted. <coughs> Excuse me. In these other tabs, I'm going to find more details. Like in the EC2 tab, it's going to break down what my potential savings would be with uh, AMD and, and Graviton instances. And I can see what my past savings has been, because I tried them. I, I implemented them in one of my uh, accounts. And now I can see what actually my uh, estimated potential savings had been uh, in the past, which helps us inform what they could be in the future. But look, I've got $88,000 $88, worth of savings by switching to Graviton, $33,000 by switching to AMD. These have different costs to do. So uh, you know, AMD instances are not ARM64 instances like Graviton are. So there, I might not need to refactor my code, as I would for Graviton. But the savings is different. Now I have the information to know which decision to make. And I also know which to prioritize. Because now I have all the instances. This is every single instance that uh, we recommend you, you, you migrate to either AMD or Graviton based on the instance type. We have similar tabs for EBS and S3. Uh, they're going to help you find old snapshots, stale buckets, your savings from infrequent access in Glacier, uh, and your savings from migrating from GP2 to GP3. Now it's time to come to the uh, Kudos dashboard. So Kudos is going to really help me dive deep into my cost and usage information. There's some high level stuff here that's going to help me, like what was my invoice spend month over month? How does it break out? How much of it was refunds, taxes, credits? How does it break out by tag? How do I charge back to my organizations? I can do that with my amortized costs. I could do that with my invoice spend. All of that is uh, here. And I can customize this. Anything you see it can be customized. I can add alerts. I can add forecasts. Um, one of the tr uh, graphs that I really particularly like in, in this uh, in Kudos is the month over month trends. Because not only is this going to tell me what's shaken and bacon, right? What's cha changing month over month based on the amount of change, but I can also see a list of all of the services here and what their month over month uh, changes. And I'm seeing a lot of green arrows pointing down, meaning I'm spending less on these services, and sometimes they're up. And if I see something that's up uh, on a given month, perhaps the most recent month, I can click on it and say, OK, uh, what's, you know, what's, what's causing that change um, and, and from which service and which account is, is responsible? So I'm just going to expand this so you can kind of see it a little bit better. Right? So simple storage service here. Uh, I now see which accounts are spending on simple storage service at S3. I can scroll down. Everything else is now filtered just to that application. I can see which accounts are responsible. This account is clearly spending the most money on, uh, on S3. It's just way more than everybody else. Uh, it's all API requests, which is interesting. It's not on the storage. So it's not like they put giant files in there and they're just hanging around. They're doing something, right? So now I, I have some more information. I can do, uh, drill down further and, and learn what the API requests are. So I, I see that they're get objects, and they kind of are increasing month over month. So now, in a few seconds, I was able to drill down on a trend that I caught. Now you can switch this to week-over-week week trends, whatever floats your boat. 
Another tab that's really popular here is data transfer. So uh, the data transfer summary tab is we break, down, we break out all of the data transfer costs that oftentimes get bundled with other services so that you now know uh, what's going on. Now note, at the top in, in Kudos, you're gonna see a lot of recommendations. These are static recommendations. These are, these are uh, uh, cost optimization recommend, recommendations, and please read them, please go through them, and tie them to the data that you're seeing in Kudos. So Amy has all of this uh, insight from all of the TAMs and the SAs and all the engineers all around the world who've been doing this for years and figured out what are, what's gonna have the biggest impact, uh, we, can, we can help you find that. And so, for example, with um, uh, data transfer, I can find daily spikes like this. I see there was a big spike on that day. I can drill down deeper into the services that are ex um, responsible for the data transfer costs, and I can see the breakout by month, by day, by account, by region, um, and then again, now by resources. So this is telling me what my top 10 most expensive data transfer resources are, right? That's really useful information for me to know because now I can figure out, well, maybe I need to put everything into a single, uh, single AZ. Uh, maybe I need to switch to some other managed service for data transfer that reduces the costs, um, like moving from, uh, from Kafka to the managed service that, it, that Amazon has. All of these kinds of decisions I can make based on the data that now Amy has. So I didn't cover uh, all of the dashboards today, it just, didn't, it just because of time. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna move on, but if you have any more questions about uh, these dashboards, then just please let me know after the session here. There we go. All right. So all the, that you saw was built on top of QuickSight. Now, scaling financial awareness is the first step to creating a cost-efficient culture and driving efficiencies within your organization. So with cloud intelligence dashboards powered by QuickSight, a multitude of ways of doing that. First is you can share these dashboards with everyone in your organization. And QuickSight provides enterprise-grade control to administer the permissions. You can also you can also take advantage of role-level security and column-level security to control who gets to see what. For example, you may want to scope these dashboards to certain AWS accounts based on the user who's logged in. You can easily express that use case. Third, you can deliver these insights to your stakeholders directly in their applications they use on a day-to-day -day basis. QuickSight provides a rich set of APIs to embed these dashboards and visuals into web applications, internal wikis, runbooks. And we also provide you options to customize the look and feel so they're indistinguishable from your host application. You can also configure QuickSight Q with Cloud Intelligence dashboards to enable natural language interface to be able to express questions in plain English. You could potentially ask, what was my storage spend last month? And have a visual return to you without having to pre-bake those insights into the dashboard. You can also ask why questions that we announced, which is why was my spend for storage up last month? And QuickSight will run correlations in background and will return you the probable causes. So you can see with the power of these visuals and the distribution capabilities in QuickSight, you can truly create end-to-end -end financial awareness within your organization. So now, coming back to Amy, she learns about all these capabilities and she works with her AWS admin and runs through the setup and launches these dashboards in her account. And now she's able to quickly report, report on the monthly sprint trends. She's able to get to the resource level details so she can understand what was the cost of a Lambda function, what was the cost of a DynamoDB table. So she's able to get both the bird eye view as well as the worm eye view from these dashboards. She's able to see all the right sizing recommendations from a single place. And she can show more importantly to her CFO how her spend is trending and how that's helping her meet her objectives. Now, by utilizing cloud intelligence dashboards, both Amy and Martha 
have a strategy in place where Martha is able to get spend updates personalized for her in the format she prefers at the frequency she wants. Amy feels empowered because she can lead with data and insight with her engineering teams to drive cost optimization efforts. And with that, now they have a continuous cost optimization strategy that allows them to see the spend so they can maximize their investments with AWS and reach their goals faster. So that was Amy. Now let's hear from Mike, who's the FinOps practitioner from Dolby. Real customer, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Graff. I'm the lead infrastructure architect for Dolby Laboratories. Um, so for those that may not be familiar with Dolby, we are an entertainment technology company that was founded 57 years ago by a pioneering inventor, Ray Dolby. Now, when Ray founded Dolby in 1965, movies and television featured only one channel of sound, and record producers were limited to a handful of audio tracks. Much, as what, much of what has happened since then to improve the sound of entertainment can be traced back to Ray, not just the technical innovations, but the impact they had on artists. Ever since our founding, our vision has been to revolutionize the science of sight and sound through our innovative research and technologies. We empower creatives to elevate their stories, and we offer fans incredible experiences. Our history of inter entertainment innovation began in the 60s with Dolby noise reduction. You all probably remember the noise reduction button if you're old enough to know what a cassette tape is. Uh, in the 80s, we had Dolby Surround. And now the innovation continues today with our groundbreaking technologies of Dolby Atmos for sound and Dolby Vision for imaging. In 2020, we brought our innovation to the cloud with Dolby IO, which is our developer platform. It's a collection of APIs and SDKs to help support immersive, interactive, and social audio and video experiences. This includes things like real-time streaming, voice and video chat, media processing, and music mastering. We have customers that use these services for a wide variety of use cases, such as AR and VR experiences, webinars, live and virtual events, sports and betting, remote production, podcasting, and more. You can scan the QR code here on the slide for more information about Dolby IO and experience some demos for yourself and even sign up for an account. Now, I've been lucky enough to participate in Dolby's journey for the past 22 years. And today, I'm going to share a little bit with you about our cloud FinOps journey. So we began using public cloud back in 2015. And at that time, we were just starting to crawl with our cloud financials. Back then, our finance department was not a fan of chargeback. I'm sure there are folks in the audience who can relate to that. Um, so as a result, we outsourced the whole thing to a third-party reseller. We worked with the reseller. We built a complicated system where we consolidated all of our spend with an account managed by the reseller. Uh, each business team would have to issue a separate PO to the reseller for their spend. And then uh, the reseller was using a commercial cloud cost management tool to slice and dice our bill, generate 70 plus invoices each month to Dolby, and charging us just 3% of our spend for that service. So, Fast forward to the second half of 2021. And at that point, we realized the amount of money we were spending on AWS, combined with our increased maturity around managing public cloud, meant that it was time to start walking on our own and bring the billing in-house. So in April of last year, I wrapped up a six-month, actually, April of this year, I wrapped up a six-month effort to identify and implement new internal tools to replace the commercial tool, work with our finance group to design and implement a cost allocation scheme for our cloud spend, and migrate away from the third-party reseller. The result has been a lot less paperwork in the form of purchase orders, invoices, payments, more transparency on AWS costs for our account holders, and stronger FinOps muscles for our team. So when I started the project to move our cloud billing in-house, one of the first things I did was perform a gap analysis to figure out what were the capabilities we needed to replace from the commercial tool that was going to be going away. And very early in the process, my AWS TAM informed me about the existence of these cloud intelligence dashboards. 
The solution was quick and easy to set up following the well-architected labs that walk you through the process. And once deployed, we were able to start customizing the dashboards to fulfill a lot of the requirements that we identified in the gap analysis. And then combined with another AWS billing feature called cost categories, we were able to de deliver a complete cost allocation reporting system that works for both our cloud teams as well as our good friends in the finance department. And best of all, it's an extremely cost-effective solution. Our production deployment includes data for over 160 AWS accounts. We share these dashboards with more than 50 users across six different business groups. Our monthly cost for this feature is $150 a month, which is significant cost savings over that previously mentioned 3% of our spend. So we focused our initial deployment on the Kudos dashboard that Aaron was just talking about. Uh, I felt like it gave us the broadest complement of those top level spend visualizations, as well as the deep dives into specific services that, we want, that mattered to our stakeholders. Uh, in addition, it easily allowed our users to self-service the data they needed for the specific accounts they were interested in and filter out the rest. And then Kudos also gave us a rich set of visualizations that we could then customize to our own needs. At this point, we've even gone so far as creating custom versions of the Kudos dashboard for individual business teams and, just only, and remove the tabs they're not interested in and only have the tabs that they care about. In addition, we really like the ability to bring in all our custom-defined cost allocation tags, our cost categories that I mentioned before. We were able to bring those all into the dashboard and allow us to build custom reports based on spending by specific tags, which is something that a lot of our teams really care about. In addition, uh, customized views based on the cost categories has allowed us to look at adding some gamification to our cost optimization efforts by showing business groups how they're performing against other business groups. So like on this graph on the bottom left, uh, I've got a custom widget we built out that shows how well each cost center is doing on adding spot instances and res uh, savings plans into their compute mix. And on the lower right, um, I'm showing each, each cost center how, how much money they're saving by using those sa savings instruments. One of the most valuable views we've gotten from Kudos is the ability to drill down to data transfer costs. This is something Aaron was talking about. I'm sure you can all relate that this is something that can be pretty opaque on the AWS bill. Uh, and it's often a source of much consternation among your account owners. The visualizations available on the dashboard help to remove a lot of the mystery around where your data transfer costs are coming from. Uh, and in addition, they can help identify potential architectural issues in your environment. A real world example for Dolby was when we were able to leverage Kudos to help us identify a misconfiguration in one of our Kubernetes clusters that was creating an excessive amount of inter-AZ traffic. The data transfer cost by type visualization you see on the right helped us to identify and eliminate about $7,000 a month in inter-AZ costs in a single group of accounts. In addition, we've recently used that same data transfer cost tab to identify uh, accounts that are uh, spending too much money on NAT gateway. The solution was a quick and easy 30 second fix to implement the S3 endpoint and eliminated over $8,000 a month in uh, internet charges for a single account. So here I've got a quote from one of my business stakeholders where he highlights the value that the cloud intelligence dashboard has provided to his team. For them, the dashboards have really helped them to flesh out the unit cost that Rohit was talking about, right? They're building a new service in the cloud and they wanna understand what the cost of that service is gonna be and how it's gonna scale. And these dashboards are really helping them with that. Now I wanna talk about a couple of the enhancements that I put in place to make the cloud intelligence dashboards more usable in our environment. First was implementation of AWS SSO access for QuickSight. And because we have these QuickSight dashboards uh, running in our payer account, I really didn't want to give all my users who needed access login capabilities to my payer account. By implementing SSO for the service, we're able to just grant users access to QuickSight directly without granting any additional console access to the payer account. Account owners are just shown another button on their SSO portal that they're already using to log into the AWS console. 
Now, users are provisioned with QuickSight user accounts automatically the first time they log in with AWS SSO. And once they do that, we can then place them into QuickSight groups, which enables the second enhancement we put in place, which is called row level security. Rohit also talked about that earlier. So now by default, when you set up these dashboards, when a user logs in, they have the ability to see cost data for all the accounts in your environment. Now, if you have a large environment with hundreds or thousands of AWS accounts, that might be less than desirable. Um, for the first part, for the user, it might be hard for them to figure out you know, which accounts do I care about, right? I don't, I don't know which ones are mine. And as an admin, you may have a desire to limit what they can see. So with role level security, we can create a rule set that maps QuickSight accounts, sorry, QuickSight users or groups to AWS accounts. And then you apply this mapping to the QuickSight data sets that are involved in the cloud intelligence dashboards. And the result is that the users are only able to view cost data for the accounts which they've been given access to. So if you're interested in learning more about how to implement these enhancements in particular, I'll make a shameless plug for my own blog. Uh, you can go into great detail on how to set these features up, um, as well as how we're leveraging cost categories in, co in conjunction with the cloud intelligence dashboards. You just scan the QR codes here, and they'll take you to this respective blog post on these topics. So what's next for Dolby? With the initial success of Kudos in our Davis environment, we're now rolling out some additional dashboards that Aaron talked about to help our teams identify and implement savings opportunities in their accounts. One of the dashboards we really like is the KPI dashboard. It's a great solution that allows teams to see, set personalized KPIs, like Aaron was showing you, for various cost optimization categories like spot instances in use, GP3 versus GP2, or how many snapshots do you have more than a year old. Once you set these personalized KPIs, they can then view their progress towards each goal at a glance as well as get a historical view to see how things have hopefully improved. We're also starting to roll out the Compute Optimizer dashboard. Compute Optimizer itself is a great built-in service within AWS console, but getting reports out of that tool can be a little bit cumbersome. I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but it's not fun. With this dashboard, it makes it a lot easier to see specific areas they can be optimized in their compute spend as well as get specific instance right-sizing recommendations, like Aaron was showing you, including how much money you're going to be saving. Now, the initial teams that I've shared this dashboard with have absolutely loved it, and they, can see, they, can, they believe they can immediately start getting value out of it. And this is particularly important in the current economic environment where everyone is particularly focused on cloud cost optimization. So in closing, I just want to sum up the business benefits we've seen from implementing these dashboards. The first is, it's a self-service portal, one stop for spend reporting, utilization metrics, and those wonderful cost optimization recommendations. Secondly, the tool gives the cloud teams the ability to gain insights across all their accounts in a single view. So rather than having to log into Cost Explorer in each account individually, they can see it all in a unified view and get those cross-account insights. Um, and then next, it allows my team to report on progress towards cost optimization across our entire organization and track that progress. And last but not least, who doesn't like saving money? Right, as I mentioned before, this is like the cost of a couple pizzas a month compared to some of these commercial cloud cost management tools which are very capable, but also much more, much more expensive. So I hope you found my story interesting and that you found something you can take back to your organization. I want to just leave you with a quote here from our founder, Ray Dolby, which kind of sums up the inventor's spirit. Uh, I hope that you'll take this as an inspiration to go out and build something on your own. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay up here with us. All right, so what you heard sounds like something you needed yesterday. You can launch cloud intelligence dashboards today from well-architected labs. Once you set up those labs, the QuickSight links would be available for you. 
Once you open up those dashboards, you're going to see hundreds of pre-baked visuals that provide insights into the most common indicators customers are looking at. You can customize them, you can personalize them, and you can share with them with your stakeholders. And you can also bring in additional data to build even more complete picture of your cost. Thank you all.